Hey guys, welcome to another Game Explained discussion. I'm your host, Andre Seegers, and this time we're joined by Derek Binner and Ash Paulson to discuss a new Zelda Wii U footage from the latest Nintendo Direct. So, let's get started. Alright guys, so the, the Nintendo Direct happened a little while ago, and we already talked about the entire thing in full, but we want to focus on some of the more individual moments now, and let's start off with Zelda Wii U, which of course is, you know, one of the biggest games Nintendo has announced, um, and we now know for sure it is in fact coming uh, to the Wii U still, and it's coming in 2016, uh, both of which are pretty big news in and of, in and of themselves. Uh, but they also showed off some brief new gameplay footage, uh, which at first doesn't seem to show that much, but in my analysis I would talk for like 10 minutes about everything. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that'd be fun to just go over everything we know about this game, everything new we saw, and just our overall you know, impressions of it, and what we might think uh, some, of the, some of the stuff they showed off might, you know, might hint at. So um, I guess first let's just talk about what we think you know, about this game in general. I mean, the game still looks gorgeous. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no doubt about that. And honestly, after playing Xenoblade Chronicles X for a while, the Wii U can totally handle a lot of stuff. It's all a matter of how much detail they put into the specifics. But in a general grand scale of things, Wii U is perfectly capable of that. And Nintendo, of course, immediately put, uh, maybe put my foot in my mouth because I had declared that there's no way this game could come to, would come to Wii U and would, st would instead be NX and, uh, exclusive. That is obviously not the case. Still think an NX version is probably going to come at some point. But on the whole, I mean, I just want more details at this point because mm -hmm. we still know very little about the game. Yeah, I'm just glad to be, in, in contrast to you, Derek, I'm glad to be vindicated because I, I've been <laughs> saying all along that this game is going to be coming to the Wii U still, and it seems that, that like that's going to be the case. I know there are still people out there who think that Nintendo is still going to go back on that and announce it as an NX exclusive next year, but I don't I don't see that happening. Um, but regardless of what hardware it comes, it comes to, it's looking great. Um, it, it really does seem like there is a true, like a truly grand sense of adventure here with just the size of the world and and uh, just kind of how detailed it is. Like you were saying in your analysis, Andre, like how you can see every individual blade of grass and, you know, we can see that Link is, uh, you know, or whoever that is, uh, is really carrying a bunch of equipment with him, like, you know, adventuring equipment, like a sleeping bag, for, mm -hmm. for instance. So that's not something that Link has done before. And, you know, if, if you're right in the analysis of that tent that you can see in the, in the uh, distance is maybe Link's base of operations, there is a real sense of kind of, adventuring and uh, in, a, in a realistic sense where Link needs to kind of keep all of his equipment with him and manage his supplies and things like that. So, of course, you know, we're we're assuming a lot from 10 seconds of gameplay <laughs> footage, but it does seem like things are kind of heading in that general direction where there's kind of an element of survival or an element of realistic adventuring, in a sense, you know what I mean? I totally know what you mean. I mean, I, I mentioned uh, Metal Gear Solid 3, or I mentioned the idea of there being stealth in the game with how there's all the grass around, how the world seems so alive and reacts to what you do. And I, I mentioned how in Metal Gear Solid 3 it has a similar mechanic, or you know what I think might be a similar mechanic, and where you can sneak through the grass. And that that world also felt alive and had a survival mechanic, in which you had to, you had to eat things constantly in order to maintain your stamina. And I'm almost wondering now if there's maybe more to more to that comparison than I thought at first. Um, you, you know, they talked before about how there being apples like in the trees and go pick them if you want. Like, what if those are essential to maintaining uh, like your stamina or something? I don't know if they'll go that far, but it does seem like they are greatly expanding the scope of this game beyond anything we've seen from Nintendo before or from Zelda before, I should say. And I wouldn't be surprised if they do incorporate some more survival like mechanics of that nature in this game. Um, at the very least, I mentioned, you know, having, like, a base of operations. And even if it, even if that tent, which I'm not sure is a tent, it could be something else, so who knows. But even if that's not a tent, um, Epona, like, being so equipped with all that equipment really does make me think, like, she may be essential to uh, how your inventory is managed this time. Because we've already seen a new type of inventory management system with A Link Between Worlds. With where you get any item at any time, but you only carry, what, a few of them, basically, right? Right. Um, so they could be doing, doing something along those lines, just taking it to the next level. Well, the whole idea of, you know, that you had about not disturbing animals, it, it might tie into either hunting or attacking, because you could, like, I could see them introduce, like, Link as 
someone from a hunter tribe, and that's why he's equipped in such a way and has you know is has a greater focus on his bow. Uh, so he could like theoretically crawl through the grass, set up shots, and then take stealth shots against animals for food or setting up so you can fight moblins or enemies or whatever else you might come across and have that whole advantage to acting more stealthy. Now, of course, you can get in there and attack because Link has a huge sword, uh, as we saw in your analysis. It's gigantic. <laughs> we, yeah. we tried to identify that. The handle is, like, the grip is so long. Like, there's so much room to put his hands on there, and then the blade is just out. Like, there's no sheath or anything. It's it's weird. so much different from any other sword we've seen him carry. Man, I feel bad for a opponent who's given, like, a, the worst, like, rug burn ever from that sword. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel like the only the only even somewhat close comparison is the Big Goron sword from uh, Ocarina of Time. But even that's not really that great a comparison. We've never seen Link handle a sword like that. And some people did mention, though, that if you look at the uh, the handle, it does look like you do see some symbols that are that are uh, reminiscent of the Goron symbols. So maybe okay. it could be like a Goron weapon, maybe. I mean, who knows? I mean, that's... Right. But, I mean, it would make sense. But that, you're right. That is one of the other biggest swords we've seen in the game. So, yeah. So, I mean, that would be interesting if they do add a more survival type uh, element to this game. Although it does, like, thinking about that, it also seems like that's very unzelda like But at the same time, this, you know, they, they have talked about how they want to make this game different, right? And that would be one way of doing it. <laughs> um, at the least, though, I mean, this, this world just seems to be, like, so insanely detailed and so alive. I feel like it has to tie into the gameplay in some way. Um, so at the very least, like, I, I think there might be some kind of stealth based thing here um, with how everything in the world reacts to you. And you mentioned too, Derek, like sneaking up on enemies or something, or maybe, um, I forget what you said exactly, but you gave me an idea of how, in the original trailer, we saw even how the world could be like lit on fire by that giant boss enemy thing. And like, what if that plays an element too? Like, what if you can, you know, what if fires can start, or if you can start fires to either draw attention or, you know, to um, clear out an area, I guess. I mean, I don't know. Like, I just see, like, I look at this game, I see so much potential. <laughs> because we, we don't <laughs> yeah. know much about it, but everything I see is so exciting. And just the attention and detail they're doing here. Mm -hmm. We need a nice, just, demonstration of what is possible, what their idea is for this game. Because we have, you know, hints about what it could do, but we still haven't had them come out and say, okay... This is what we want to accomplish with Zelda Wii U. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I am dying for that moment. <laughs> I mean, all, all we know for sure is that Aonuma keeps saying that it's going to be an open world with a twist. So right. I feel like it's not going to be a traditional open world. And there will probably be some some greater level of focus than there are or than there is in most traditional open world games. So in that sense, I think that'll be a good thing because I think Zelda needs that kind of focus. But I'm, I'm curious to see what that twist is going to be. I am too. I am really curious to see what he means by that. I mean, as a point on the analysis too, like even though this does seem to be like a more open world, like you can already tell how the mountains kind of form natural paths for Link to follow. So, I mean, I don't think it's going to throw you out, like it's not going to be like one gigantic um, Hyrule feel from like Ocarina of Time. Like it's right. going to it's still be, there will still be structure to it. But yeah, I am really curious to know, yeah, as with you, Ash, like what does he mean by that twist? Like, there's so many directions they could take that. And that, to me, that actually excites me, because I'm I'm not actually that big of a fan of open-world games in general. I find them to be just kind of boring sometimes, like just yeah. traversing levels that don't even feel designed. So, Same here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I don't want... And while I'm excited by the prospect of an open-world Zelda game, I don't want that those same problems to carry over here. So... Yeah, I, I, I've been racking my mind. Like, what does he mean by that twist? Like, what is what does what could be what, what could they be doing here? Well, hopefully, whatever the twist is, it makes it makes this you know quote unquote open world Zelda game more palatable to people like the, like us who don't really like open world games as much, who do prefer to have some sort of direction and uh, you know at least some level of of linear progress uh, instead of just having a complete open world experience. Because you know there are people who don't necessarily prefer that and I, and I think Aonuma and Nintendo know that especially given you know how they are Nintendo's always been kind of like you know concerned about people who aren't necessarily into those kinds of experiences and they want to make it as inviting to, for all audiences as possible so my bet is that whatever this twist is it is going to make it more palatable for people like us who don't necessarily want that true open world experience mm -hmm. 
I've been racking my brain like you, Andre, and trying to think what that twist could be or what that what could be that different take on the open world genre. And I honestly, I am not sure. I mean, I mean, they could do something where sections of their world are, you know, uh, sectioned off until you know you have a certain item or whatnot but that just seems to fly in the face of what they want to do with this like the whole purpose of open world and link between worlds you could still travel around and but you just needed the certain item and you could get that item and go wherever you needed to it's 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 definitely a conundrum and i'm not sure how they'll solve that but all the same i'm still very curious how they're going to solve that yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of questions here. I mean, I was just thinking how we haven't even seen an interior environment in this game yet. Like, everything That's we've true, seen yeah. is taking place outside. We haven't even seen Hyrule Castle yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if there even is a Hyrule Castle. That's we, true. We don't, even re- we don't really even know anything about this version of Hyrule or where and in, in, in which timeline it takes place. Or I, I have to say that for whatever reason, I can't, I can't really pinpoint it. I am getting a prequel vibe from this game so far. Just from the footage we've seen, and I certainly can't. Well, hold on. Back that Pre- up. The prequel to what? There's well, I mean, <laughs> there's yeah, that's what I mean. List. That's what I mean. I, I know, like, like forever, Nintendo is you know kind of like trumpeting the fact that Skyward Sword was like the, the new origin point of the series, and I don't know if I necessarily think that this would be take place even before Skyward Sword, but I am getting kind of like a, you know, I, I I should say I don't think this is going to be taking place at the end of any current timeline. I feel like it's going to be set back toward the beginning, maybe somewhere toward closer to Skyward Sword than say you know, Wind Waker or Twilight Princess. Oh, I definitely agree. Um, I mean, I pointed out before, I, 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 mean, I can't remember everything I've said in all these analysis, but there have been a few <laughs> comparisons to Skyward Sword already that yeah. I've made, um, including most recently with that, uh, or the most recent tie-in I had is with that book we saw on Link that seems to have this blue this blue jewel in it that reminded me of the the energy that we saw in Skyward Sword with the uh, involving the time stones or time crystals or whatever they were. I think they're called the time shift stones, right, or something. Yeah, time yeah. shift stones, I believe, something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. Um, and who knows if that's actually related or not? But um, but before that as well, we saw in the gameplay segment a bridge that looked very similar to the bridge of Elden from Twilight Princess, uh, which may, and, except it, lo- it appeared to be completely undamaged. So which which would suggest to me it is a precursor to that game at the least. So maybe it could be slot between the two, right? Either between Skyward Sword and. Um, uh, Twilight Princess, maybe. Well, then, then you get into the whole debate about whether it takes place before or after the split in Ocarina of Time, though. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, want, let's not bring the timeline into this. I know, right? <laughs> I, I've always been working under the theory, just <laughs> after seeing this game, that um, it pr- likely takes place somewhere after, sometime after Skyward Sword, but still before Ocarina of Time. That's kind of that's, what I'm thinking, too. Yeah, that's just a vibe that I've been getting where it Hyrule, like... They're on the they're on the, they're on the surface now, but they still haven't necessarily tamed Hyrule, like established the kingdom. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so th- I think that might be part of it. This might be the official establishment of the Hyrule Kingdom. One thing I, I think we can extrapolate from what we've seen so far about the story is that the prevalence of the of the Shika symbol, like for for instance, on the book. Andre in your analysis, I do think, and this isn't that surprising, but I think we are looking at a at a core Zelda series story. So I think you know because the Shika symbol is so prevalent, I think we're going to see the Shika tribe, of course. But I think that also means we're probably going to see Ganondorf, the Triforce. This isn't going to be a side story like Four Swords or what have you. This is going to be a main you know entry in the series, and uh, maybe this is maybe the first time we'll see you know, uh, following Skyward Sword, if this does take place where we think it could, maybe this is the first time we'll see Demise following, you know, his curse at the end of Skyward Sword, you know? It, who knows? It would be exciting to see, like, whether or not Demise first took the form of Ganondorf or not, or yeah. if he took uh, some other form or uh, something like that. And the whole presence of the Sheikah symbol on that book excite me excites me to no end because I'm a sucker for lore and <laughs> seeing how they build up any type of Zelda lore and like how things fall into place or anything like that uh, I, I am really excited to see what they can do there it's why it's part of the reason I really enjoy Skyward Sword so much because I, I love the the world building that they did in that game I still think the gameplay is pretty fun too but the lore is you know really stood out to me 
Totally, and and that's what I'm. You know, I, I know that Nintendo has gone has, has gone on records many times, especially Aonuma saying that they fit the game, they fit the story around the gameplay mechanics they have in mind. You know, initially, so whatever story and lore we get in this new Zelda game, it is obviously going to con- you know be kind of forced to conveniently fit around whatever gameplay mechanic they're pushing here. But still, you know, whatever lore we do get, I'm just like you, Derek. I'm excited to see how this kind of fits in to the overall Zelda puzzle, such that it is. I forget, did the um, Lens of Truth, did it have a Sheikah connection? It did. Well, yes. I mean, at least it had the symbol on there. I, I don't right. know. I think they even go so far as to say that it's like, you know, it was something that the Sheikah made in ancient times or something. So I'm trying to think, like, it, maybe the book had a similar purpose in this game, like, used for, like, revelations of some kind. Yeah. Um, I mean, I threw out the idea of it being, or as Derek came up to with, or as Derek suggested before, um, before this discussion, is it could be used for like translating things, for instance. But I wonder if I might go beyond that. I would not be shocked if this is the titular item in the game, like that book. I mean, he's wearing it; it's on his belt or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah. Th- that book could be like where we get our title from, and I can I, see that. It'd be really cool, honestly. The, yeah, uh, it, 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 he's just wearing the Hyrule Historia. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I could totally see that being the case, though. Yeah, I could, too. I mean, that that would make sense, so... We'll have to see, but, I mean... I just I, I just want more. Yeah. <laughs> what if Link actually is a Sheikah in this game, or what if you're playing as... I mean, I know that we've, we've talked about this before, but what if we're not playing as Link in the traditional sense that we understand Link? What if this is Zelda? You know, what if this is Sheik? You know, we don't really know at all that you know this is necessarily link you know i mean we do but we don't let, let I'm, not, I'm not i'm not questioning whether link is a male or female necessarily but we don't really know if this is link in the traditional sense that we think of link my guess is you're probably right that this is probably going to be a very non-traditional link i think yeah. it's still going to be link sure but he's not going to be he's 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 too knowledgeable from what we've seen like mm-hmm. He he's not he hasn't in his traditional clothes yet. We have yet to see him in the traditional tunic. Right. Uh, yet he still looks supremely capable in that outfit that we see him in right now. So, which makes me think we're going to get a very different type of origin from Link, where usually he's sort of like this lazy kid who doesn't really, you know, get involved in much, but then just called to action and then rises up. Here yeah. he's already prepared for that action. Exactly. Which does suggest a uh, connection to the Sheikah as they would train somebody from a young age to be prepared to take on duties. Right. And and, and also in the sense that this is almost a lifestyle for him. Like, as you said, if, if, if they're still taming the Kingdom of Hyrule, that this would be a lifestyle for the people on the surface. That they're surviving and they're exploring and foraging and really, you know, kind of discovering the land. Hmm. Yeah, that that would make a lot of sense. Um, and, you know, lending further criticism of those differences is the fact that as you guys pointed out before, I mean, the bow seems to be, I mean, from what we've seen so far, that seems to be his his, his main weapon more than the sword. Um, he always has a bow on him, which Link has never had before. I mean, he's had it in his inventory, but he never wears it on him. Um, right. Whereas here, it's constantly there. And I think, too, that, does, that might hint at a bigger switching up with this character than we've seen really before for Link. Yeah, I totally agree. Cool. Um, anything else, guys, about this game you can think of that we haven't touched on yet? Or no, I think that pretty much covers it for all ten seconds worth. All of ten footage. seconds. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, I think that wraps up for us here. Thanks, guys, for watching. If you liked our discussion, make sure to like and follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Game Explain. You can find links to them in the description below, which go we keep updated on everything we post. And of course, keep an eye on Game Explain for more on Zelda Wii U and other things gaming as well. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.